Hello everyone. So today we're going to be exploring the circle of fifths. Now this is kind of an elusive subject that um, I've mentioned a couple of times and may not stick as to its relevance in your mind, but I hope after this video, after today, you're going to see how important and influential uh, this grouping of scales um, is to you and will be in your future. Um, I should point out at the beginning here that we're going to have a uh, a lot of assignments after spring break where we're going to be composing music and this sort of information uh, will become very relevant over that time. Um, also this is to recap on a couple of assignments we've had already, uh, namely our vibrato melody, how we were supposed to change to a key signature that we're used to, which was a skill of transposing, and then we use transposing again as we were doing subjects and answers. Um, and that is where we were going. We were going to learn this, uh, this idea for composing in term four. The main concept that we're gonna learn today with the circle of fifths, um, and yes, I know it look like, looks like a coronavirus. It's not a coronavirus, it's called the circle of fifths. Um, the reason why we're learning this is it's, um, or I should say the, yeah, we're gonna edit this out. Okay. Oh yeah. So the thing that holds all of this together is that it's done with fifths. Remember me mentioning the dominant of each scale is the fifth. It's super important because you can never end a song without a big going from the fifth to the first of a scale. Um, to emphasize here, I'm gonna use the bass because the bass is best equipped for this whole um, jumping from the fifth to the first. Um, but first off, what do I mean by the fifth? So if we're talking about A major, say the names of the notes, A, B, C's, D, E, F's, G, sharp, A, Okay, um, the fifth of the scale would be E, right? So E would be the dominant of that scale. And why is it called the dominant? It's because kind of like this circle that you see here, um, if you imagine all seven notes, again, they also mean seven notes of, of a scale going all the way around a circle. So let's say we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, a all the way back, what's the one that you see on the opposite end? It would be E. It's like Fiji. You can't go any farther away without coming back. And musicians have discovered this relationship and how it sounds um, over a long time in order to feel like we're going on a journey. We start here at home. have to come back and you hear how satisfying that is at the end there to go from E back to A in fact one of my favorite songs it's called flight of the or the it was one of my favorite uh, overtures to an opera is called the flying Dutchman and the flying Dutchman literally goes super super awesome and it gives a lot of power um, to convince you even more you can hear how it's used in more powerful jumpy happy music um, to start off in for instance um, if we were to talk about Star Wars <laughs> this first interval here and going from D to A and that's a fifth D E F G A again you can't go any farther away before you start coming back 
right? Because if I go D, E, F, G, A, that's halfway. It's almost, it's on its way to get there. Um, there's a lot more physics to that as well that I'm not gonna get into here. Um, when you get into college, ask these questions again, and you'll see that um, there's a lot of scientific reasons why the fifth or the dominant of the scale is super important. Um, now I've gotten into a lot of technical things here, but it's time to grab your instrument and we're going to explore some things together. Now whatever instrument you're holding, get ready to tune with me here. We're going to get our instruments and tune. Here's A. coronavirus, I mean this uh, circle of fifths here on the board, you're going to see that the top one, kind of like a clock, if it would be a clock, would have 12, which means zero minutes, right? So it's got a zero under it. What is that? Because it has zero sharps and flats. If you go one clockwise to the right, you see you have G major. G major has one sharp, okay? These numbers will help you to catalog where everything is. But for now, let's just play on our instruments and explore this idea together. So, especially if you have a viola or a cello right now, this is your moment to shine. You can see that you have open strings, and we're going to do a C major scale. C. Now, with all these scales, I hope you realize that when you're playing two parallel strings, you're doing exactly the same fingerings on both strings. That's one of the perks of understanding this, okay? Oh, one, three, four, oh, one, three, four, or for you violas, oh, one, two, close three, oh, one, two, close three. Okay, so that's C major. Now, check out how this relationship works. Now, I'm gonna play that last thing again on the G string, and that's actually the first few notes of the G major scale. Now if I play those last few notes again, that's actually the first few notes of the D major scale. See where I'm going with this? Now unfortunately for us violas and cellos, we've run out of open strings to start with. Um, but if we go to the violin, you've got a few of the same things. Alright violin players, grab your instruments and play along with me. We're going to start all the way back here, so cellos and violas did C, G, D, and now we're going to start back here with G because we have an open G string. Ready, set, and... Okay, if you play those last few notes again... See how that's a D major scale. Here's the A major scale. how that works. I don't even have to memorize how the sharps and flats intervene with my notes. I can just play if I play those open strings. Now obviously when you get to two octaves or three octaves you have to know how everything fits on your instrument but this should help you to understand how this is all organized. That's all the same skills especially the upper half of this scale is the same as the first half of this scale and so on and so on and so on. Okay? All right. Now, you may notice here we've gone in a clockwise pattern. We've gone C, G, D, A, E. Well, that's because that's also the same order of sharps that appear in your key signature. If you have one sharp in your key signature, that would be this F right here, F sharp. The next sharp would be C sharp. The next sharp would be G sharp. So I'm talking about A major has these three sharps. Think about it, okay? The next sharp would be D, next sharp would be A, next sharp would be E, and so on until we get all seven notes sharped. Here is the pattern, F, C, G, D, A, E. Now there's one letter that's missing. Can you look on the other side of this chart and see what it is? 
here's an A, here's an E, it's B. F-C-G-D-A-E-B. I like to use the mnemonic Father Charles goes down and ends battle. Okay? F-C-G-D-A-E-B. Father Charles goes down and ends battle. Okay? So that's the order of the sharps. And sharps, of course, are on mostly this half. Well, actually, they're completely on this half of the circle. So if we were to draw one more in, it would be B. Now we haven't gotten that far in our scales, but it exists. It's there. It's something you can play. All right. So now that we have this pattern, F, C, G, D, A, E, B, um, why do we have more here and why does this start on E? Well, because you also have to think about notes that have the same place on your fingerboard but are called differently. Um, can you think of a note that might have an accidental that has the same place on your fingerboard as B? Maybe C flat? right here C flat is the same thing as B natural now you're glad that you worked on those whole and half steps okay that's where this all comes in so we see that B is the same thing as C flat now can you start seeing a pattern E is the same thing as F flat so we actually have here the pattern repeating itself again F flat C flat F C what's next G flat. What's next? Father Charles goes down. D flat. And now you can see how it's all connected. A, E, B. Father Charles goes down and ends battle. Now I have to admit, there's a sadder version of this same mnemonic. It goes backwards because there's not just sharps in our key signatures, there's also flats. And flats go the opposite way battle ends and down goes Charles's father yikes sad stuff okay but that also shows you that these other two have other names battle ends and down goes Charles's father D is the same thing or D flat I should say is the same thing as C wait a second sharp right think about it g flat is the same thing as that's right f sharp so it literally is a circle of fifths and it goes on forever in fact composers use this pattern to show what key they should go next if there is a certain key signature um, think of all the medleys we've done they use these rules to know what's a closely related key. All right, now that we have all the technical stuff out of the way, we can see the order of flats. And bass players, it's now your turn. Okay, now basses are super cool in that they're unique, okay? Basses are opposite in their stringing and how they're constructed from the cello viola and violin in fact the cello viola violin are all kind of the violin family in fact i think the viola was first it's up for historical debate because they're that old the bass we know did originate in a different time however because of practices and um, tradition it got put together with the orchestra and it's served a great job since as i showed before it's got the fifth going back up to the first. Um, so what that means is that they're actually fifth apart otherwise. So instead of going up the scale, we could go down the scale. Let's look to see what's next that we need to learn today. So let's actually go back. We've got A major that we could play on the bass. A major starts on the third string, right? we're going this way on the scale but our strings are backwards from everyone else we're gonna start on the next lowest string E okay there's our 
E major. All right, basses are super cool in that they can play F major as well. So now instead of going clockwise, circle of fifths, we're gonna go counterclockwise. And guess what? A fifth going the opposite direction is a fourth. Think about it. C, G, D, A, wait a second. C, D, E, F, G. If I go from G to C, G, A, B, C, or G, A, B, C, it's a fourth, okay? So sometimes, especially in the band world, they call this the circle of fourths. We're gonna call it the circle of fifths because that's just the way most of our instruments work. However, the bass is different. It's gonna go opposite. So I'm now gonna go to an F major scale. And to play an F major scale, uh, we play in half position, right? First finger back here. your F major scale. It has one flat, B flat. Okay, now we go to the B flat major scale and I'm over just on the next string. See how that all works? Okay, now I could play E flat on the bass as well. However, just to show you how this serves us very well in the simplicity of how our instruments are constructed. Violins, back to you. Now we're going to work on our A flat major scale right here. Violins, okay? A flat major can start on your G string. You're going to do pattern three, which means that this is back here in our half position. This is our natural, and then these two are closer together. Ready? And... Again, notice how the last half here is also the beginning of the next scale. Okay, and that is also the beginning of our next scale. Here's E flat major. I'm sorry, that wasn't E flat major, that was B flat major, okay? So you can see here how your strings are spaced a fifth apart. Fifths are super important. They're the ending of the songs, they're powerful entrances, um, and then you can't get farther away without coming back. It's basically where the middle of the song also goes. You can't go, you can't come back home until you've gone somewhere, so that somewhere that you need to go is the fifth. Um, also, it should help you to understand how the scales that you played um, are all connected. They're all um, half of them actually belong to half of another scale. So that's good news for us. We only have to learn half of each scale, right? So I hope you understood there um, all those things, especially also how to find a fifth. Fifth is just counting the letter names, C, D, E, F, G. And it's also backwards. If you go backwards from C, C, B, A, the next one is G, and that's a fourth behind, is also a fifth forward. Lots of concepts that we covered today. Have fun with that. Don't forget to work on anything else I may have included with this announcement. And you guys have a great spring break. Bye-bye.